All right, we move this and we're going to get started. The actual process of making wine is really very quick. I mean, five, six minutes and you're basically done, <laughs> except for the 12 month waiting that you'll have to do before it's finally ready. And then there are the periodic rackings every six, to eight weeks. And then there's the bottling, the degassing. Well, I mean, yeah, there's some other things that will need to be done. But as far as getting started, we're talking about five minutes to go ahead and get that done. So let's go ahead and get that done. First thing we want to do is to make mention of the fact that before I did anything, uh, all bottles and jars and funnels and knives, whatever, they've all been uh, sanitized using uh, star sands. Uh, recently did a, vi a video on sanitization, so if you don't have star sands, there are other methods that you can use to sanitize your, your equipment. Uh, that doesn't involve you going into your pocket and, and paying somebody for, for an easy method of getting it done for you. Oh, what am I doing? So again, this is all done beforehand. Um, all I need to do at this point is to take a funnel. Go ahead and open up one of our bottles of juice. And before I do that, using uh, uh, bottle juices or canned juices, uh, They've all been pasteurized, really, they've all been sanitized. You don't have to worry about a lot of things that uh, some people will, will, if they're using fresh fruit, they'll, they'll, first thing they'll suggest is that you need to use canna tablets to help sterilize the fruit to get rid of uh, any existing bacteria or any existing uh, yeast that you don't want in your, in your, uh, final, uh, your wine product. Uh, really, all that's been done for you. So all you need to do is just open the cap Making sure I got a convenient towel close by, which I don't, so I'm going to try and be a little bit more careful with this time, and pour in your juice. All right. Now I'm only going to put in one bottle of juice at this time. That was what mistake I made. Oh, I have to go with it, is that I'm going to pour in my sugar and then I'm going to shake this up. And the reason why I don't want to put in both uh, both bottles of, of juice is because this thing can get kind of heavy. Right? And I don't really need both bottles to be able to mix up the sugar in the juice. So we're going to go ahead and add our sugar, which was two cups of sugar, by the way. which when you're not really sure about how much sugar you should add, usually if you're making a one gallon batch, it's generally about two cups of sugar that you're going to start with. Because the fruit itself is going to have its own sugar. And the more sugar you start with, the higher potential alcohol level you're going to have. And what I want to do now at this point is just go ahead and let's just go ahead and dissolve that sugar. And while I'm doing that, Let's see if I can read some of these questions here. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, Penny, good afternoon. Well, good evening here in the Carolinas. Uh, Eric, uh, my fiance and I just made, made your orange wine recipe. Can't wait for the final results. Never knew juicing the oranges was such a workout. <laughs> this is that one scene after I've. Uh, uh, zested all of those oranges. I, you, you've seen the reaction on my face when I, when I finally finished that last orange. Uh, I'm surprised. That's actually my most popular video. Uh, David, love to see another mead step by step. Uh, Still indeterminate about what kind of a meat I want to make the next time around. I still have uh, still have uh, three pounds of honey that uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, gave me for uh, uh, as a gift and made. Uh, what did I make with that? I made that. Uh, was that the lemon or the orange? I think it was the orange mead that I made out of that. Oh, it was the orange mead. It was the. Uh, 
uh, mandarin orange mead. Uh, we're still waiting on her to come up with a suggestion as to what I could make with that uh, last uh, last batch of honey that she gave me. It does not appear as if no no is online tonight. But yeah, you'll see me making another mead. I take a minute. Well, I'm waiting for that to dissolve. Uh, in terms of memberships, uh, a lot of people are trying, are having problems trying to access the uh, join button. Yeah, accessing the join button uh, from a mobile device, your cell phone, or whatnot. Uh, it's pretty simple from uh, from a desktop or a laptop. Uh, but if you've got a mobile device and you're watching the video in, in landscape mode and you don't see the join or the uh, subscribe buttons below uh, the video, just just rotate your device. <laughs> <laughs> to minimize the screen and then you'll see the, uh, the all of the joins and the, and the memberships and all the comments below that's all you need to do uh, cherry and apple go well together uh, for cherry I'm going to wait if I'm going to do another mead I think I'm going to use uh, well for, if I'm going to use cherry for anything I'm going to wait for cherry season to come around uh, the only cherries that I can get frozen are the dark cherries, which I like. And I have several, a uh, couple of recipes or batches that are currently going uh, with the dark cherries right now. Uh, but I'm going to wait, uh, wait till the fruit becomes in season. Do a lot more fresh fruits uh, as opposed to uh, uh, juices and, uh, and frozen fruits, at least for a while. Um, yeah, at least for a while. What are we doing here? Yeah, this is dissolved. So all I need to do at this point is go ahead and add the rest of our juice. stop about here for two reasons uh, I'm, I'm not going to fill it up to the top for two reasons one uh, during primary fermentation uh, the yeast uh, actually makes a good use of the uh, oxygen that's 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 currently in your juice uh, so actually giving it a shake for the first three days or so uh, to just mix in some more oxygen is actually a good thing also sometimes when you're making your wines and meads Especially with meads. Meads have a tendency to uh, kind of bubble up <laughs> during primary fermentation. And sometimes it will bubble up all the way and out your airlock. So you have to be mindful of that fact. Uh, so no, uh, having a good amount of headspace during primary is, is a good thing. During secondary, you pretty much want to try and fill it up all the way. Uh, I've got a gallon's worth of juice in the bottles, but this is a four liter container jug, carboy, Jimmy John, take your pick. Uh, so it wouldn't fill it up to be uh, uh, all the way anyway. And usually like what I, I can either add more juice or, or water just to bring it up to the top level during secondary fermentation. Uh, primary, secondary fermentation. Uh, primary fermentation, about a week. And then you would rack it, especially if you're using fruit, uh, you would then rack it into, sec into your secondary fermentation container uh, to get rid of all of that uh, fruit that you've got uh, either floating in the container or sitting in a uh, in a uh, a bag, because uh, it's done its work, and you can pretty much just discard that uh, however you see fit. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see. Let me catch up on some comments here. Um, okay, legendary Drew managed to save my overly sweet berry wine. <laughs> Mixed it with one to one, very dry cider. That works. Uh, I think that's uh, a follow on to the uh, uh, blackberry wine that I made, uh, following the, the recipe exactly where it specified four, uh, four pounds of sugar when it should have been four cups of sugar. So I ended up with a very, very overly sweet and very potent wine. 
uh, that I ended up having to, uh, to water down just to, just to, just to make it look a lot more like wine and a little bit less like a thin syrup. But it ended up being pretty tasty. Uh, gonna end up doing that one again, uh, with the modifications. Uh, let's see. What do we need to do now? We need to add our citrus blend substitute, which is the juice of half a lemon. Move that off to the side, move that off to the side. Not going to be using tannin with this particular recipe. Pears actually have a fair amount of tannin in and of themselves. However, I don't really think I need it for this. So we'll just go ahead and add our, uh, add our lemon juice. Lemon juice brings a, a brightness to the wine. It, 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 when I first started, before I finally learned why people were adding citrus blends, uh, either a citrus blend or, or adding uh, the juice of a lemon, uh, without it, the wine has, a, has more of a flat flavor to it, or just, it just tastes flat. Uh, simply adding a little bit of lemon juice or citrus blend kind of brightens up the wine quite a bit. So it's, it's, it's more tasty, <laughs> quite honestly, in my opinion. Uh, beyond that, that was about it. Uh, the only thing you need to do to turn your sweetened pear juice into wine is that you need to add your yeast. Now again, if you don't have regular wine yeast, you can use the original regular Fleischmann's yeast, not the insert, not the rapid rise, not the pizza, not the pizza uh, version of, of the yeast, but the, just the normal plain Jane version of it. And you should be okay. Now I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon, which is all you really need. I mean, if you want to bloom it first, you can, you don't really need to, but if you want to do that, you can. Uh, I've not had any problems with getting the yeast started just by simply uh, pouring it in the uh, in the container and calling it a day. I mean, if you want to shake it up, you can. You don't have to. And all you need to do is, at that point, uh, put in your airlock and stopper and call it a day. Now, usually before adding the yeast is when you would want to pour off a little bit and take your hydrometer reading. But we're not going to be doing that because I want to keep this one as simple as possible. Uh, again, the hydrometer reading will be listed uh, in the, uh, uh, with the ingredients uh, in the comment section when the YouTube finishes processing this video and, uh, and puts it online. Uh, what I want to do now is take my airlocker stopper. It's got the appropriate level of water in it. Insert said stopper into the, uh, into the hole. And that's that. For the next uh, three to five days, or at least the next three days for certainly, I'll just go ahead and uh, more than likely, uh, I'll just take off the, the airlock, put the cab back on, give it a good quick little shake uh, to get some more oxygen in there. And that will be that. After three days, I don't generally, I don't do that anymore because it's not necessary. Uh, usually after a day, you'll start seeing uh, activity, uh, uh, CO2 being produced, alcohol being produced, uh, CO2 pushing itself up and through your airlock. And uh, there you go. Uh, again, in about uh, four to six weeks, you're going to start seeing um, uh, a layer of sediment on the bottom of your container, jug, carboy, demijohn, and, uh, and then that's when you know it's pretty much time to rack your wine, which is basically just siphoning off everything above that uh, dead lease layer or dead yeast layer and uh, putting it in another container and letting uh, secondary fermentation continue on from there uh, up until the point where your wine becomes clear and uh, it's been long enough where you think your wine is, is ready so you can go ahead and bottle it uh, and then subsequently later on start drinking it. Let me get this off the way. And that's the process for making wine. Uh, it's the same process whether you're using pear juice, apple juice, which is the cheapest wine you can actually make, uh, well, it's grape juice or, or any other type of juice, and that is the process. It takes about that long to, to go ahead and get the process started.
Now this pair of wine video is one of those videos I had decided to do as part of a live stream. In this live stream, I figured I needed something quick and simple to do, so why not do a pair of wine video? So I incorporated that, and now, 12 months later, it's now time to do the final tasting. So, let's see what we've got. Now, a few notes before we pop the cork and find out what we've got. DIY fermentation, pure wine, born to 2021, AVB, 10.5%, and it's been pasteurized. Uh, the wine is clear. Uh, there's no sediment on the bottom. Uh, which is a good thing because if you let it sit in the carboy long enough, generally speaking, most of your sediment's going to fall out. And beyond that, I really don't know what to say. I haven't, uh, I haven't tasted this yet. Uh, last time I actually put my tongue on a little bit of it was when I uh, did the back sweetening just during the bottling process. It's not like I this out the way. It's not like I poured a glass and, you know, down to down, is it sweet enough? You know, that sort of thing. It's kind of like a little Dixie cup filling up just an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch and making my adjustments based on that. But that was months ago, so I have no idea what this tastes like right now. So, without further ado, let's, uh, let's find out. Let's see. Huh. Hmm. Let's, uh... Let's try the, the new. Yeah, it's one of those tight corks. There we go. <laughs> uh, I will say this, even though I have now switched to a different uh, type of natural cork, it's one of the few ones that of the old batch that I've used where I have not actually broken it. However, it did start to crack a little bit while pulling it out, out of the bottle. Don't have that problem with so much with these, but I'm just saying uh, I'm still tempted to use natural uh, artificial corks going forward. But what have we got? Okay. Small glass because it's now early in the morning for me. First notes. First thing I, the first thing I'm noticing is that even though it's only 10.5% ABB, the first note that I'm hitting is more alcohol followed by very light pear aroma. It's got a very light, light smell to it. Yep, alcohol then pear. <clears throat> But, I mean, it's already been noted that it's clear. But the aroma and the color and the clarity are all pale in comparison to what it actually tastes like. Is it something I want to drink? Hmm. Try that one again. The pear flavor is is light. It's very light. I mean, it's 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 there, but it's 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 very light. It's a very light uh, pear aroma, pear flavor. This was back sweetened to a semi-sweet uh, wine, which I think is good. Hmm. 
at 12 months, I can say probably that there is still a light little bit of harshness on the back end at 12 months, um, which suggests to me that probably a, li a bit more in the way of aging for this particular uh, batch of wine is probably in order. But if I were to go in rummaging through my wine closet and pulling out a bottle of wine at this moment, at 12 months, do a, do a blind <laughs> grab one, just grab a bottle and see what I've got, I would not be disappointed if this is the one that I picked. Um, which I'm going to simply say after this sip. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not mad at this one at all. Uh, this is definitely a bottle I'm going to finish up today. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I could pair it with, with what I've got in the refrigerator and what I'm planning on eating today. Uh, but still, no, I am not disappointed in this one at all so far. Uh, I might want to try this as a mead at some point. Uh, what I will probably end up doing is that I'll save try and save at least one or two bottles of, of the wine and make a pair of, and make another pair of mead because I've got a project coming up where I am going to be using pears in a mead, but it's got a few other ingredients that I would not probably add uh, for just a simple pair of mead. Uh, but yeah, my recommendation is to keep this video fairly short. Uh, pear wine works. Uh, flavor is light. If you let it... Uh, sit in the cardboard long enough, it will come. I'm not, I'm not going to say that this is like crystal clear or anything like that. I mean, if you look at it hard enough in the right light, <laughs> you can see a, a, a tiny faint amount of haze, but you have to go looking for it, you know, to find it. So yeah, I'm going to simply say that in terms of the wines that I make, uh, this one, yeah, I'll make this one again. Uh, uh, another, another one gallon batch to be on the safe side. A one gallon batch of, of pear wine, a one gallon batch of pear mead, and a uh, side by side comparison, and uh, see which one I like best. But no, I'm not mad at this one at all. So, again, very short video uh, pear wine, one year, especially made during a live stream, which was a kind of a rush job at best. Uh, but have you made it this way? Yeah, I like it. So I'll see you in the next video. Oh, by the way, uh, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons. Also, hey, become a member, help support this channel, or Patreon to really help support this channel. Beyond that, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.